Hey guys, welcome back. This is day four of our 12 days of Christmas in July series. If you're just getting started, I will leave a link at the top of the description so you can check out our first three videos. And this is a loaded pocket, which is finished with the Rejoice collection. I had so much fun with this, y'all. I even had to do math and it was totally worth it. Um, but this is my very loaded pocket. It has tags. It has file folders. It has altered paper clips. There are flowers and inserts and rosettes and buttons. So um, I think that you will enjoy making this too. So stick with me and we'll make this together. So here is the collection I'm working with today. It's Authentic Rejoice. This is brand new this year and it is amazing you guys let me just tell you this this every year she comes out with an amazing collection and I think oh my gosh this is my favorite but I honestly truly do not know how she will top this collection next year it's just that amazing so I've got the 8x8 paper pad this is really good for smaller patterns of the same images and then they've got the cutter parts as well so many good plaids so many good vintage images i cannot even hardly stand it but also for this collection and this is not always the case but there's a sticker sheet as well as a die cut sheet and these are so stinking cute um, lots of really great things to work with and I've been working on travelers notebooks lately and I think this is going to be perfect for that as well because there's page tabs and smaller images and different things that I can use for that as well as my Christmas cards or my tags or what have you um, but there's just so much to work with so let's just I'm going to show you the paper pad first, and I don't need to flip through because you can see all these patterns, but oh my goodness, they're just amazing. These plaids are my heart, and so a few of the pattern papers, to me, are reminiscent of Scandinavian, like the deer with the flowers and then the black background, um, so that's just kind of a different theme, um, and I love it. I think it looks beautiful and it's um, it's fresh and it's different than what I've been working with recently. Um, so a lot of pattern here, a lot of different um, scales and florals and graphic images, a lot of um, cut aparts just in this, but also holy Dinah, an entire paper pad of cut aparts. Uh huh. I said that. You heard it. We are all happy about this. So you cannot even imagine how many options you're going to have with this. Like so many. And then on the back are different paper patterns. So you're going to have even more selection from that. Some of them are vintagey. Some of them are retro. Um, I love these. These are like fun pop art kind of. Um, and this is what I'm working with mostly for my project today. Um, it's just so good. And the colors are great. Look at this star. I love that so much. A whole paper pad, you guys, of cut aparts. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. How will she ever top that? Look how cute it is. All right, enough of me jibber jabbering about the collection. Let's get into the project. First, we have to create the base um, and the pockets for this very loaded envelope. And I um, picked the size six by seven and a half just because I'm a photographer of craft projects and it's easier to get pictures of almost square things. And so that's a purely self-serving favor to me. Um, and I would not normally use weird green paper, but this is leftover and it's just for demonstration. Um, the base is going to be six inches wide and seven and a half inches tall. You do want to cut this from heavy cardstock. So you go in with your 110 pound cardstock and that is going to give you a nice, firm, sturdy base. Now, then you can switch to 65 pound weight for these pockets. So for my project today, I picked three pockets because I wanted to be able to fill it in layers and have all the pieces show. Um, and then I decided that they would have to have bottoms so that 
pieces didn't fall in and create um, trouble getting them out. So I decided that three pockets would work and I measured my strips. So the pocket itself is going to be two and a quarter by six. So I have cut my paper two and three quarters by seven. And then I just want to score a half an inch off of both of the sides and then also off of the bottom. And this is going to create the pocket. So go ahead and fold that. You don't necessarily need to run your bone folder on this because the poofier the pocket, the more room you have to put stuff in. Um, so I've got my scissors here and I'm just going to clip off these corners because I want it to be able to seal up on the bottom without creating any kind of weird bulk. And then I will take my double-sided adhesive and tack that down with the sides in first and then the bottom, right? So this is gonna be your pocket and you're gonna want three of them if you're going to create the base as I am showing it today. So let me just move this scoreboard. This is my extra piece with the measurements on it because I forget, I just, don't keep numbers in my head like I used to. So to start assembling it, what I wanna do is add adhesive to my pockets. And then I'm gonna put the very top one on first. So just line that up with the top. For my project, I used white. And then I picked a card stock from the Spectrum card stock that matched my project. Okay, so now the front or the top one is in place. For the next pockets, what you want to avoid is adding them directly because what you're going to get is things sticking on this, right? And you slip something in there and it's going to get stuck on that. So you want to put something in the pocket so that you have a flat surface all the way down. See, now that's just a regular old pocket. And this is two pieces of cardstock. We're still in the 65 pound weight. Um, it's four and three eighths inches tall. And it's an odd number, but now we're at five and 15 sixteenths. It's just weird. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna fill this pocket and I want that to slide in easily. So if you just cut it at six inches and then cut a sixteenth of an inch off. That's probably much easier than telling you fifteen sixteenths. That's... And then you do want to put these in before you add them to your project because otherwise they're going to get stuck and be difficult to put on. So what I did was here is the adhesive and then I put adhesive on the top as well so it will stick to the previous pocket. And I'm lining that up with the top of the pocket again. and then adhering it. So it, here's a pocket here, and then here's a pocket here. And then we'll do that one more time, but this time we're gonna make sure we line up that card here on the top of the previous pocket, and then slide the lower pocket into place so that it meets the bottom of the base. So now we have a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket in the back. So now what you've got is easy to slide in pockets that aren't going to cause your inserts or tags to get stuck on those back flaps. So this whole finished thing is going to be six by seven and a half. Here's the base that I prepared ahead of time and I used the white cardstock and finished the back. So this is the print that I think 
reminds me of Scandinavian print and I might be wrong you can leave me a note in the description below and let me know I know it's a quilt pattern but um, I just really really think it's beautiful um, I'm using that red licorice spectrum cardstock again throughout the whole thing just for a consistent look and I've got my three pockets here so the first one I want to put on is to cover the bottom pocket and I've got this beautiful check this came from the 8x8 paper pad I really liked that scale and so I cut that and matted it to fit perfectly on the front of this pocket with the white cardstock border showing all the way throughout so I did that all the way the second pocket is more of that pattern from the back and you will see that I have only added adhesive to the top um, and that way I can get that slid into the pocket and positioned correctly um, and I don't know that I would be able to do that if I had glue at the bottom so make sure you only put it at the very top and just on the little on the sides so you can slip this in now I have these um, alternating patterns if it makes sense to you to um, use the same one throughout you know just go through there's so many patterns that you will have a hard time choosing because they're all so beautiful and I'm gonna remember to keep that white border showing at the top so that would be pocket number two and then here's pocket number three I went for a bit of a smaller print this time and that's got those cute deer and the tree uh, stripe and I did the same adhesive for this one as I did the last so that um, I'll be able to get it into place before I stick it down and now this is a very sturdy it's a very heavy and it's very chunky and I just love it that way because it's going to be keeping its shape for a long time so I've got three pockets with my three alternating patterns and I want to add this stripe here um, this is just a gold mirror card stack and I cut it with a border die and then clipped it to size and I don't have some double-sided adhesive that is narrow enough I wish I did um, but I do have this zig and I think I can get this to stay on I'm just putting it at the top And I like it on this second border. It goes all the way over because I didn't want to cut into one of those scallops. So normally I would have it just as wide as the pattern paper and not the cardstock base, but um, I did really like to keep the full scallop. So if you have a um, clear block, go ahead and use that to just weight that down while that glue is setting up but I think I'm okay to keep working here I took a doily that is die cut from white cardstock this is a Cheeryland design it's the French pastry doily and I just clipped it into portions so that um, I could add it to different places it's too big to go any one place um, so I'm going to put my first one here and I know that it's not really at the top but I've got some um, another element to add on to it a layering element and flowers so it's not going to show that it doesn't go all the way to the top and then I've got one more for the top so I'm just not even really uh, worrying about exactly how far over I'm not measuring that I'm just kind of adding it where I think it looks good so I've got a image here that was one of the cut aparts I just fussy cut it out because I liked the shape and I added a eyelet here a very tiny one no does that show um in some twine going through and then I added a bit of scrap that was laying on my table that was part of a different die cut but I did like that gold you know going around as a border I put adhesive only on the bottom because I don't want to accidentally 
seal up this pocket. Um, and so that's just going right here. And that will be kind of my focal image. And I'll come back in and add the rest of the details for that. So I got my envelope punch board out and I created a really tiny little file folder with alternating tabs because I wanted to pull in those stickers from the sticker sheet and I thought that was so cute. Um, it's tiny this way, but look, when you open it, you can put your pictures up here and some journaling or a gift card or something. And then this will tuck just perfectly into that top pocket. So that kind of extends the height of it a little and it gives it a nice detailed um, shape at the top. For my other element here on the top pocket, this was a die cut, a scalloped edged circle that was part of the die cut sheet. And then I topped it with a sticker. So it has a nice sentiment. And I did add it to this gold mirror cardstock just because I like things to be shiny. So I think I can add this with just this clip here. And then it can be an element that can be moved or um, you know, placed in a different position if someone wants to do something with the back of it. So now it's got, um, its place on this pocket. Now, the one thing I really loved about her new journal cards is that I had a die. <laughs> Once again, that self-serving favor. Um, this tag die was so perfect for the size of these images. Look, I just cut that out with that and it was so perfect. So now I've got dies or now I've got tags that are all the same and I even finished the back with more of that Spectrum antique lace cardstock. So this can be written on or a picture added to it. But now these are all going to be the same. And they were so easy to cut out. And I was able to get the full image. So that makes me happy. I put an eyelet on the top and ran some twine through. And this one got a button. And I just think that is so sweet. So I got a couple of tags here for the top. And this, once again, is just amazing how well that fit into that um, tag die. So I can fill that in here. Now we've got um, different elements to pull out and add things to. Here is the cutest little clip ever. And this is die cut from that sheet. There's, there's multiple ones that have the same shape, so you can put them back to back. So I did that with these little oven mitts and the cookie and I put spacers between um, foam spacers so that there would be enough room to accommodate the bulk. This is a larger um, paper clip and so this is just gonna clip right on here and be part of that pocket embellishment. I've got one more tag here. I put one of my poinsettias on here and still finished on the back with twine ribbon um, and a couple little holly leaves to finish that off and that can go here and um, for a fun insert I created a rosette with pattern paper here topped it with a gold scalloped edge and then the um, I circle punched one of the images on the die cut sheet. So that is just topping this sweet folded insert. And then I put one of the cut aparts from the 8x8 paper pad. It's just clipped on so it can be moved around or things can be added behind it. Now this can go into my pocket right there. You see how fun that's filling up? I might be obsessed with loaded pockets after this. Okay, we're getting into the home stretch here. So I've got some leaves and some poinsettias and smaller white flowers. I'm going to add those with my hot glue right here. And now you can see that was um, just okay to leave that doily a little lower because we totally covered the top of that pocket. I got a couple of vintage buttons to add to the bottom just for extra detail. And last but not least, I'm going to just use a little of the stickles on my flowers to give them a little extra detail on the ends. And that is it for 
day four of our 12 days of Christmas in July series. If you enjoyed this project, make sure you come back tomorrow for day five. We have lots more holiday inspiration coming your way. I'll leave links in the description for this collection as well as the ribbon trims so you can come back and find all the details for those brands there so that is it for our project if you enjoyed it leave me a comment give me a thumbs up and if you're not already i would love for you to subscribe as always i'm wishing you a happy and productive day and i thank you so much for watching bye